Hi, this is Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. I want to show you a really handy tool in this software that's found under the jQuery user interface bootstrap tools. So this is a jQuery tool or a bootstrap tool we're going to be using called wizard. You could also call it a panel wizard because what happens is when you click on it and draw a box, you create this sort of panel that you can use for multiple steps. I'll show you what I mean here as we dig in and discover what the wizard panel does. You can see a step one right there. If I double click on it, this particular wizard panel starts me off with two steps. So that means that I'm making a panel that my user can click through and get information or fill out information or watch a video or whatever I want them to do without leaving this web page. So let's do an F5, even though we haven't done anything to this panel yet. Let's do an F5 so you can at least see what I mean by steps. So this, let me move the camera too. So this is the panel wizard with no information in it yet. And a next button, so we can go to the next step. You see it says step two. There's a previous button, a next button, and then finally a finish button on the last step, which will close it. Okay, so now let's talk about using this and configuring this. This is really handy for a lot of different things. But before we talk about putting content in here, before we drop objects, let's look at how this can be configured. As I said before, this is a jQuery object. So since it's jQuery, that means the look and feel of it can come from the page's jQuery theme. If you remember, if you've watched my jQuery theme video, jQuery is assigned to a particular page. That means every jQuery object on this page can look the same. There's a consistency to it because there is a jQuery theme assigned to the page. So if I want to do that under the style tab, I can say I want to use the jQuery theme for this. So that's set to true. If it wasn't set to true, if I turn that off, then I could style this whatever I wanted to style. I could change all of the colors and fonts and all that. But for now, just for the sake of ease, we're going to keep that as true and we're going to use the jQuery theme for our look and feel. So what is that look and feel? Well, remember the jQuery theme is assigned to the page, not the object. So I'm going to go up to the page menu, go to page properties, and under the style tab of the page properties is where I can find my jQuery theme. I happen to be using one called start. There's a whole list of thumbnails of them here. There's also a theme manager. If you want to click on some and see what they look like, you can get little thumbnails of them. I won't go into all of those details right now. I just want you to really get the idea of how this panel works. But for the look and feel, we can assign a jQuery theme to it. So my page, not the object, but the page is picking up the jQuery theme called start. So that means every jQuery object I put on this page is going to have this same look. Now you'll notice that under the options, tab, the layout mode is actually a pull down. We don't have to use jQuery. We can also use this as a bootstrap object. So what are the advantages or disadvantages of that? Well, first of all, by using bootstrap, we actually have fewer options. As you can see, resizable got grayed out. That means we can't resize it if we make this a bootstrap object. Also, we can't hide this with animation if it's bootstrap. If it's jQuery, we can. So when I click jQuery, these things are actually usable. So then why would we use Bootstrap? The advantage of using Bootstrap is your page might load a little faster because it's not using all the jQuery bells and whistles that might load the page down. But it's probably going to be minimal, so what you're going to want to do is play with that, experiment with that, and choose the one that's best for you. For this video, I am going to use jQuery. I think that's probably going to be most common. And it gives us all of the options, so we can talk about those. So, so far, all we've talked about is what this looks like when you put it on the page. Let's start actually playing with some of the options now. So one of the things that you'll see is a whole list of things over here. By default, all of them are selected. A modal, if you don't know what a modal is, a modal is a window that appears in focus over the rest of the page when it opens up. So when we clicked F5, when we previewed, this was set on modal, and so what happens is everything else behind this, the rest of the page is kind of out of focus, they call it. doesn't mean it's fuzzy. It just means it's not technically in focus. It's not something that we would be using. It's not functional until we get rid of the modal window. That's what a modal window is. This is in modal. So until we close this, either by finishing it or closing this, watch what happens. Now the page comes back into focus. In other words, it's not grayed out. That's what a modal is, a modal window. And that's a good way to use this. You don't have to use it as a modal, but 
in this case we are. The rest of these are pretty self-explanatory. It can be resizable. In other words, the end user can change the size of the window. They could drag it around. We want that little close box. I click the X. That's what this is. Show dialog automatically is something you're going to want to know about. So you're usually going to leave this checked on because if you show it automatically, you're going to see what we just saw. The modal or the object it's going to show when the page loads. So if we turn it off, if we don't want to show this automatically, the problem with that is when we preview, this object is not going to show until we make it show. And the only way to do that is for us to trigger an event. And that could be really cool. You might have a button here that says, you know, click here to do whatever. And then you would have the modal show or the window show so that people could use it. That would require using an event. We won't go into events in this video. You can watch my events video and see how that works. But it's actually pretty simple. It's a matter of putting an object on here and saying, when we click on this object, show my wizard panel. And that's how that would work. So you can look at the events videos to see how that works more specifically. Right now, let's turn it on so it will show automatically. So now we've looked at the design of it, some of the options for how it will appear. Now, what can you put inside one of these things? Well, basically, you can put almost anything. Um, you'll want to put things in that make sense for the purpose of a step-by-step -step panel. So that means we'd want to put text, we want to put images. The things you would not want to put in here are things like other jQuery objects. Since the wizard panel is a jQuery object, you don't want to put things in here like jQuery cards or jQuery accordions. Um, jQuery on top of jQuery doesn't usually write very good code. So you're, you're going to want to stay away from that. But you're, you're going to want to put in some basic static things, things like images and text, even videos and other things like that into your panels. So what I've done is I've already done that. I'm going to open up another page where I have a panel already made. And you can see that I put a text object here on step one and an image. And then to edit the next one, you just click next. We're still in design mode. This is step two where I put a YouTube video because you can put videos in these, which is really kind of cool. And then I've got a third step where I have a font awesome icon and some more text. And again, you can put some other things in here. You could even put layers in here, although you probably won't need to because a panel in and of itself is a bit of a layer. It's a type of layer anyway. And so you're normally going to just want to put static things in here. And so let's, let's test this. If I click F5, let's see what this looks like. I've got a three page panel and there it is. I've got it set as a modal. So that's why the back is kind of grayed out. It's going to always start on step one when it loads. I click next, I can watch the video. I click next and I see the next page and I can either click finished or I can click the close box. If I click finish, it goes away. When the page reloads, there it is again as a modal. Next, previous, and all of these are working just great. So that's a basic use of the wizard panel. It's a great for step by step, and you can add the number of steps you want here. It starts you off with two, but if you click add, it would give you a fourth step, and therefore I would have a fourth panel in here to go edit. So here's my fourth panel. Also notice that you don't have to call them steps. You can put whatever text you want in here. Double click on this and put whatever text you want. So again, that's the basic use of a panel, a wizard panel. Now, this is the most powerful use I'm going to show you. I saved for last. There was another little option in here. I don't know if you noticed it, but there's a tab here called form, which means that a wizard panel can be turned into a form. Now this can be very powerful. All we do is click our form button, configure our form settings, and now the wizard panel takes on a whole new superpower. So I've already created one. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Let's go over here to my other page where I have a wizard panel with form objects in it. Because I can turn this into a form, I can now make very complex forms. Instead of having forms that fill the page with all kinds of details that people hate filling out, you can break your form up into bite-sized pieces by making it step-by-step. -step. In my step one, I'm asking for just three things, and then on the next page, I'll ask for their address, and then on the next panel is their phone number, and then one more panel for what's the best way to contact you. Now, you'll notice that this panel slash form has no submit button, which is also kind of cool. And the reason for that is as soon as you turn your panel into a form, 
by clicking this option right here and enabling your form settings. As soon as you do that, what happens is the software knows that the finish button is now the equivalent of a submit button. So on my final page, where the submit button is actually a finish button, when people click that, they will be submitting the form just like they would any other form. Now this you can look at if we preview. We can't test the functionality of the form in preview because remember forms have to be tested on a server. And right now I'm just in preview mode offline. But if I was on a server and I had published this, we could watch this form submit. But people would fill out the form, they would click next, click next, etc., etc. And when they get to this page and click finish, the form would submit. Right now it won't, again, because I'm offline. Now here's one more tip and one more trick I want to show you. Remember, when you're using forms, whether you're using the wizard panel or any kind of form, you have to make sure that your page extension is set to PHP. So I should have gone to Page Properties and come up here and change this to PHP. Because I'm using a form, which is a PHP object, my page needs to be a PHP page. So that would be important to do before I publish. So that's an important tip. Another little trick is an option that is called animation. So you can affect how the object shows and how it hides. Right now it's been set to none, so you didn't see anything snazzy there. But if we wanted to, we could make this appear or disappear by using different animation techniques. So when we preview this now, so watch what happens when it shows. It's going to happen pretty quickly. We set it to puff, and so it sort of puffs into place. Let me reload the page so you can see it again. There it puffs. I'll do it again. That's what puff does. And when we close it, we had an animation of explode. So it goes like this. Just adds a little more fun, a little more interesting effect to your panel. So I think this is a very powerful tool for you to use on your web pages to save some space, to save some web page real estate, if you will, and to make your interface a little more user friendly for your visitors as you build your websites in 90 Second Website Builder.